I was thinking about what to say to introduce Philippe tonight. And um, Philippe's the only digital guy that I've ever worked with who's so completely connected into culture and what's going on and politics and art and drama. And every time you see him, he says, have you seen this podcast? Have you read this book? Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? And I can't quite keep up with all the incoming, but what he does brilliantly is to connect all of those things happening in the world with how we as humans in our day-to-day -day life connect with our computers and online and turn that into really powerful insight um, that drive websites. So over to you. Thank you. What's great about this is you make me seem like a good guy. And <laughs> in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to teach gonna you like. <laughs> I'm going to teach you like three principles that are actually can be quite manipulative and dark. So Ooh. I'm going to leave it up to you what you do with it. But these these psychological tricks, they're actually older than the internet. So while yes, the data and the online geekery that I, I quite indulge in. Um, these concepts have been around really even before psychology was a practice and when you're hearing me describe these three principles just think about you know have I fallen for this maybe the last month uh, perhaps I've fallen for this in the last year because uh, some of them I fall for them myself so just a quick I'll give you a little bit of context and then we'll jump into what the three are about um, I picked these three because they're not really spoken about too much in marketing. Uh, like I go to uh, quite a few conferences, I don't hear these percolate too much. And I've drawn them out of really one of the oldest uh, performing arts there is, which is magic. And I'd say, I was thinking about, you know, what is it about magic that draws you? Besides, when I was a teenager, I, I used to do it, I, used to, I really loved it. So I thought, to be a good magician and, a, and, a, and a one that is able to earn good money and to really wow a crowd, probably the number one skill set is the ability to predict a human behavior. Like, if I just boil it all down, that's actually at the root of it. Because I, I haven't met any successful magician that can't put themselves in, in someone else's head and try to see how things are. So, let, let me explain to you, like, I'm quite a fan of card magic. And card magic, if you're thinking about perception, it's like, it pretty much happens in here. Like, it's, it's not like juggling, which often is, is high, people can see it from far away. It's quite an intimate kind of a, a, a performance art. During, during card magic, what, when, you look, when you think about perception, it's about the size of your thumbnail. If you hold your hand out, like if, you, if, if I'm looking at you, Jorgen, like I've, got, <laughs> like I've got focus on your forehead or I've got focus on your eyes and I'm taking in the rest of the room, but really my, my, my eyesight is taking you in. But it doesn't mean that just because I'm looking at him that my focus is there. So I might be thinking about what's the next point in this talk that I'm giving. I, I, I might be thinking about my nerves, a, a host of different things. So a magician, they're not only following someone's eyesight, they're also thinking about where's the focus going. And, and that, there's a little bit of a, a, a nuance in that. The other three things that I'd say are quite potent when it comes to magic and actually taking magic and, and applying it to making a website persuasive is for one, it's managing attention. So you have to have that skill of, okay, I see you're looking and you're, you're taking this in, but can I direct you or even misdirect you to, to think about something else? Then I think there's, and th this might sound a bit like off, but it's creating false memories. And there's been so many times in magic, especially like growing up with it, where I would perform a trick and then the retelling of the trick would be entirely different. I mean, but I, I didn't even do that. Like, I, I'd, leave, like I, I, I'd be dumbfounded by it. And then I started tapping into that psychology of what's exactly happening. And often a good performer can bend that. They find the, find like the fringe of perception and they'll start to just they'll put in little suggestions and they'll, they'll manipulate it a little bit. Um, and, and then finally, and I think this one's super relevant for if we're talking about websites, is a good magician is able to remove boredom, which there's 
so many boring websites. <laughs> and, like, and, and I know this, I've spent a lot of time looking at a lot of websites. And, and admittedly, like Christine, what she didn't say is like eyes were glazing over a bit when I was talking about the really nerdy stuff. But there is something about like, can you actually make a compelling website that's persuasive? Right. So I'm gonna get into the three, but first I'm gonna I'm gonna take you through. If you can imagine this room, um, just for now, like basically at age 13, I got my first taste of magic, and it was just because it was random chance. But me, my dad was fixing his car. We went into the mall, and I, you know, happened to like stumble on a magic shop, and the guy showed me one trick. Coincidentally, the trick that you're gonna see in like a minute. Um, like the most basic trick that I learned, and I was like, I need to know how to do that. And then, of course, I was 13, so I was like, is this going to impress girls? <laughs> I wasn't thinking, oh, this would be super applicable in like 20 years' time when I'm yes. presenting to a bunch of people about marketing. Yeah. Like, but it gripped me, and by 15, I was doing kid shows, and by 16, I decided I'm going to bring it to the street. And that's where I learned a lot of lessons. So. Let's just imagine this is a street. Uh, I, I grew up doing it in Vancouver. If you've been there, kind of gas town where I, where I did it a lot. And the first thing with cars um, is, is by nature, like it's a, it's a small prop, right? Sometimes like I would use Sharpies, I would draw on cards, and, and I would, um, you know, uh, I, I didn't really have many big things to work with. And what I, drawn here is really the formula that I, I didn't I didn't not at all use this back in the day but I realized this is to get the tips to get the large tips in like my tip jar which is often a pickle jar or a, or a hat um, I needed to first get the attention of people because if no one was watching the tricks like obviously like you need that first and when it's cards unlike a juggler on the street like you you have to get maybe two to three people so you build a crowd with two or three people. Then you get, you get their attention, you have to build up their interest, right? And that's, if you do like a trick that wows them, then you usually get, they're vocal, they start like reacting, and there's a little bit of commotion, and then suddenly other people notice the two or three people, and suddenly you've got a crowd, and then it fills out, and usually with cards, this is essentially the limit of, you, you can do it for about 30 people. So, I, I haven't been doing magic now for quite a few years, but I'm going to try to do the first trick <laughs> that I actually learned from the magic shop. And we're going to go through this, and then we're going to apply it and the psychology to a little bit nerdier side, how this actually works online. So, streets here, and no one, like people are buzzing past, they've been you know, interrupted by people selling hot dogs, whatever, and I have to get their attention. So the, the first thing is, is, is can I like, do something to just catch their eye? Like nothing fancy, but like that idea of, of how can I get someone's eyeballs? So talking about the eyes, and oops. Now, it, I can't even get it, there we go, get the spin going. Um, I would catch someone's eye and doing some sort of a thing, and I'd say, would you like to see a trick? Like, really simple. And can I have one person who's up for it to just be the guinea pig? I'm Yeah, just the... Okay. Can I, I'm gonna pick my wife. Why am I Are we self-serving on this? Yeah. Okay, so... you. Yeah, you haven't seen this one actually, conveniently. Um, so, now, I'm just, I'm just going to take out the, make sure I got the, the cards there. I'm going to do, a, it's a really simple trick, and the, for those of you at the back, you might have to stand just for the next three minutes or so, because you're going to have to be able to, to see, um, see down. Um, I'm going to basically, um, Talia, <laughs> tell, me, tell me to stop at any time. I'm just going to shoot. Stop. Oops. <laughs> Let me do it slower. Stop. Do you want to stop here or you want me to go a little bit further? No, oh, I want to stop that. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm going to take, the, take that card and then just show it to everyone else and... Not none. Go look. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah, so just put it on top. And, and then again, tell me to stop anytime. Stop. Oh, okay. I'm just going to cut it in there. 
See the pressure on to, to mess it up at this point? Now let's see. I'm gonna go. Let me let's make it fun. Let me just take the cards. Let's let's give them a little bit of a mix. Okay. Now would it be it's kind of mixed? I'm gonna, Jorgen, I'm gonna ask you to just take that and just give it a cut. So take a part of it and put it right there. Okay, now would that be interesting? If I take away the part that you cut, I want you to take the top card off of that. Oh, man. <laughs> and, uh, have to, and don't show me again. I'm just going to take the rest away. Show everyone. Is it the right one? No. Uh, no. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Interesting. So I did mess it up. What, what is it? Seven. How weird. I, let me try one more force. I'm going to take the seven. I'm going to give it one cut. I'm going to make it harder on me since I messed this up. If I go, let me see, let me maybe one, two, three, four. I want you to pick one of those, one of those piles and I'll take the rest away. Uh, if we find one. Okay, so I'm going to take these away. And then I'm just going to take, up. this is the thing, if you screw up, you got to just up it. you just got to make it like harder on yourself. So, screw it, I'm going to do it. All right. Okay. I'm going to add one, two. Seriously, this is the part where if you screw up again, you're like, it all falls apart. I'm going to, I'm predicting that the card that you picked, sorry, Tally, that you picked is on one of those piles. And I'm going to, thank you. I gave you pressure. Which pile is it? Middle. Middle? Okay. Okay. I'm going to take them away. That's been fair. Take off. Take it off again. I've made it so hard. Yeah, please. Show everyone. I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Another thing about being a magician is can you make the illusion of choice a real thing? <laughs> or can you bring it so we start the lesson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I, I have it. So I'm gonna do one last thing here. I'm gonna I'm I'm just gonna take it. Let me see. Actually I'm gonna since I don't I don't have a wand, I'm just gonna use I'm gonna use a sharpie. Hold on. This is gonna be the silent hit. Give me a sec. I'm gonna do a move with this. Oh. Right? Let me see if I did this. Did you see while well, I was distracting you? I don't know. If if let me see if if one cut. Now it would be less impressive if actually the whole. Wait a sec. Oh. Wait a minute. Uh, now, if, if if the deck. Wow. There's, there's a there's a queen in here. But what? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Tricks and forget our websites. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 Seriously, I, this is the thing. So when the car go <laughs> and they do. I didn't yeah. even know that. Um, <laughs> that's brilliant. But that's the thing. It's like it. What? So the the, the first thing I'm gonna do it on the first of the three. It's called it, it, uh, like I'm, when I put out the four packs. Remember, and I was trying to get you the fours. It, it's called circumstantial relevance. And what circumstantial relevance means is, does something appear natural, whether it's offline or online? So an example of that is if you have stock imagery, does usually your, your website's persuasiveness drops a notch because people feel it's staged, so they won't go for it. So how, you know, when you're looking through your site, if it looks staged, it's not going to work. When, when I did that for, and I promise you, I did screw up on that first bit, but I figured, why don't we make it a little bit harder and see if I can work with it. If I was doing a move, which there might be a move, I don't want to make it an obvious thing. It has to look natural, right? And that selection process has to look natural as well. So when, uh, this is actually, uh, I'll give an example, and Andrew, you, you'll know this, because um, Andrew and I are part of this one uh, group online where we exchange ideas on how to do uh, different marketing tactics. 
And one guy had come there, he was kind of a high-end physical trainer, so, um, you know, really in shape, uh, kind of sold at the premium level of the market. And he had done some new marketing collateral uh, to present, you know, to kind of package up different things on his website. And if you can imagine, it's dressed in a suit, like, you know, looking really good, trim suit, and then he, um, <laughs> he unbuttons the shirt, I'm not doing this, he unbuttons the shirt to here, and, he, and he's like, you know, and it's, it's good because he's got like this impressive chest and the abs going and everything and it, and it, it looks, it looks like, I'm like, that's cool. And, it, and then the next photos, it's like the shirt's completely off and all he has is like the suit trousers and the dress shirt and kind of like the jacket, you know, just it, it, like over the shoulder. But he looked, he looked awesome. And he asked, you know, which, which, um, you know, which uh, one of these, uh, photos should I be using? And, and Andrew, you'll know Todd jumps in and he's like, none of these. He's like, give me one moment, one moment in real, like real life where anyone is in just suit trousers looking awesome with like their jacket over the perfect lighting. And, so, like circumstantial relevance. What you could do instead, if you wanted to be a high-end trainer, is he's a family man. So why are you at the beach throwing your child in the air? That's a natural moment where you would actually just be wearing shorts and, and showing your physique, or doing like a tough mutter or a race. There are many. And then if you want to do the vanity side, which is fine, but to show that you look good in a suit then why don't you have like maybe a video on your website of you in a nice suit presenting whatever it is that you're presenting. So contextual relevance and also a quick note on copy, if you're using things like revolutionary or cutting edge, that sucks. Like <laughs> no one cares about it. Like it's, it's it, you have to make it natural and real. If people can believe it, the way they read your site, and I've seen so many that like if, if it's actual English and you're not trying to be perfect on it, then people connect with it. So anyways, that's, that's circumstantial relevance to the second, the second one. I would guess at least 50% of you in this audience are actually addicted to it right now. And I would consider myself borderline addicted to it as well. I'm fighting it. Heroin. <laughs> Is it just me? Sorry. Yeah. So, it, it's the alerts, it's the incessant, like we, we constantly want to check our phone because that email that's coming in, it could be positive, it could be negative. And it's called intermittent variable rewards. It means that maximum addiction in any device or anything that you're, you're marketing comes about when the user does an action and they don't know what the outcome will be. So you see that little red thing come up, you're like, is it a photo that I'm tagged in? Is it, a, or maybe a part of a newsletter. Intermittent variables, you can, you can think of it as just slot machine addiction. Because you put something in, you do some sort of action, and then maybe it's good, maybe it's neutral. And thinking about if you're having a newsletter or something that you're communicating to your people with through your site, it means that sometimes you don't have to have like the best newsletter, not every single time, but there's got to be rewards in it. And then you've got to be like, am I, you know, am I, is mailing every day too much? Maybe I should be mailing every week or once a month because I've got to respect their time, but I've got to give a little bit of anticipation as to, is this going to be uh, useful? Uh, is this going to make me want to keep opening? Is, and that's why people follow people on social that they haven't spoken to in years because they're like, oh, you know, maybe I'll miss something. Like maybe, uh, maybe I do have to follow that person. So yeah, intermittent variable rewards. <laughs> um, I think I think it's all something that we need to be aware of, and you can use it for good and for bad yourself. But it's very much like thrive and, and alive. Finally, the last thing I'm going to talk about is actually getting the money. So, what <laughs> attention, interest, desire, and action? Attention online on a website is like your traffic sources. Then interest is that first visit when they come to the website and it better be the reward better be up high, right? Like there better be like a good fulfilling experience the first time they hit your site because the desires when kind of emotion comes in and this is multiple site visits. This is when they keep coming back and they start getting like into your brand. It doesn't happen on the first time that you hear of someone or you, you, you visit a site for the first time. You, you, you consciously thinking about like how many times are people coming back to my site? Finally, the action, it might be you're looking for the sale, the lead, the brand awareness, whatever it might be. In my case, in Magic, I noticed that 
when I was 16, I was just like learning how to make even five bucks an hour and then scale it to 50 bucks an hour. Like that, that divide was, I'd first put out an empty hat, right? Like if, if, if this was like, you know, I don't know, five times larger, it, it imagine it was paper and glass. And I, and I put it out here and it was empty. Then at the end of my show, I'd say, this is what I do. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, it you, you, you know, you can leave me uh, whatever you think. Uh, it, it was a very unconfident approach. Then I realized that this concept, and the third one is, it's called salting the collection plate. <laughs> is you take some bills, and you put like a five and a tenner in there, and there's some Canadians in here, so you'll know that usually tips are loonies and toonies, right? Which is in Canadian, one dollar and two dollar. The moment I started putting fives and tens in the collection plate, suddenly I saw that the cues people got from it were, hmm, you know, maybe bills are what you're supposed to, and, and maybe I didn't get too many tens, right? But I started getting far more five fives, and that changed a lot. And, then I, and, and now, how might this apply online, is if you, if you have a choice, let's say you have three choices of a service, if you're able to kind of prep people as to this is what others do and kind of prepare them on that, so maybe the, 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 the <clears throat> choice you want people to go with is the popular choice. I mean, re restaurants do this all the time. Or uh, it's, it's, it's like the two, there's like three options and the two are kind of in gray and the one is in the contrasting color that pops out at you. That makes us, that definitely pushes people. I've seen it over and over how much that increases people selecting because they're taking cues from what everyone else is doing. And then you can only magnify it by saying thousands of people do this one or whatever you're using, you know, Ch Cialdini's like elements of influence to, to get more and more people there. But anyways, that's, that's salting the collection plate and it's, it's a fun one to try if you haven't tried it on your site. Anyway, that's it for me. Um, I welcome any questions. I am thrilled that you guys are here. So th these books, I I'm happy to sign them and, and give them to you guys. But um, it, yeah, uh, I welcome any questions if there might be some, and then we're gonna uh, continue with the drinks. We'll come and give you a round of applause.